Welcome to the Video Dictionary, where we explore the histories, meanings, and contexts of the words we use every day. This month's patron request is from an old friend of mine, Andrew Lusky, and he wants to hear about the history of the word hate. Noun. Intense dislike or disgust, usually resulting in aversion or hostility, stemming from feelings of hurt or anger. Verb. To feel intense dislike, disgust, or have an aversion or hostility towards a person or thing. History and etymology, originally coming from the Proto-Indo-European word kaid, the word hate actually took two different paths to find its way into modern English. Kaid originally simply meant strong emotion, but from there the word followed two paths, one leading to the noun and one leading through the verb. In Old English, the noun form of the word hate was hete, and was later modified to conform with the verb hetian before it became the word we use today. The noun form hete has pretty much meant what we mean by the modern word hate we use today, and came from the Proto-Germanic hetis, which is also the source of many words in other European languages for hate, like the modern German has or the Dutch, hat. But the verb form is where things get a little bit more interesting. Hatian goes back to the Proto-Indo-European kaid, the same as the noun form, which originally meant sorrow. It's also the origin of the Welsh kas, meaning pain or anger, and Greek kedos, meaning sorrow. Following the rules discovered by Jakob Grimm, the K sound at the beginning of the word kad became an H sound, and it formed the haton in Proto-Germanic, meaning to hate, in the same way we mean it today. And from there, it became hatian, and eventually the word we use today. It's easy to imagine how a word meaning sorrow and pain could come to be conflated with the word for hatred. When something hurts you, it's completely natural to feel anger. Really, isn't that what hate is? A combination of anger, sorrow, and pain? Prescription and commentary. This is the part of the show where I tend to get a little opinionated and political, so proceed at your own peril. If you've enjoyed this video up to this point, please leave a like and subscribe for more explorations of this wonderful language we call English. You can find links to my sources and other information about this word in the description below by following the link to my blog post. This word was recommended by one of my patrons. You can become a patron of mine by following the link in the description to my Patreon or by contributing to my PayPal where you can suggest a word and have it featured right here on the channel. Now, let's get on with the show. Throughout history, the word hate has always been used in reference to particularly strong emotions including pain, sorrow, and anger. But lately the word has been attached to more solid, tangible things like hate speech or hate crimes. It's even being used in legislation. A hate crime is something where a crime has been committed, but now the motive is actually included within the accusation itself. In these circumstances, the word hate has moved away from its originally emotional context and meaning and simply, has and simply started to mean prejudice. This began by simply putting harsher sentences on crimes that were committed because of, of a person's race, ethnicity, religion, sexual orientation, or sex. But it's moved on to things like hate speech laws in the United Kingdom. And this is where things get dangerous. At this point, we're conflating prejudice with a strong emotion. And this goes a, even a step further beyond what happened in 1984 where they had the thought police. We're now moving into a world where we have the emotion police. And we all know that emotions are much more difficult to control and contain with 
within ourselves than even our thoughts are. It's not just a simple matter of not being angry and not hating something. Most people in this world have a hard time even controlling their own thoughts. Now imagine trying to police your feelings on top of that. It's possible, but it's not easy for anyone. And if we start jailing people for telling a joke that may seem uncouth to some, well, we're headed down a very, very dangerous road. I'm not racist, by the way. I just really, really wanted to f*** her off. Jews. Another thing I've noticed about the use of the word fear lately is it's also become conflated with phobia and fear. You'll hear someone talk about a homophobe being hateful, or a xenophobe being hateful as well. Now, the thing I fi find strange about this is when we hear so someone has arachnophobia, or, or they are an arachnophobe, we don't ridicule them for hating spiders. Or if they're an agoraphobe, we don't ridicule them for hating the outdoors. We usually feel bad for these people. And most of the time, people will want to help them. Help, try and help the agoraphobe get outside, become part of the real world again. Or, in some cases, we even want to have arachnophobes getting used to the presence of spiders. So if somebody is truly homophobic, shouldn't we have more sympathy towards them than derision and hate? Shouldn't we try and allay their fears and help them come out into the real world instead of ridicule and make them back within themselves and become more ensconced in their fear and hatred. Either way, the word hate these days is overused and used improperly. Where the words prejudice or fear would be more appropriate. Either way, if we're basing legislation off of the word hate, even if it's fear, prejudice, or actual legitimate hate and anger, all of that stuff happens within a person's mind. And when we start legislating what happens inside people's minds, that's when we start slipping into 1984 and the Thought Police. And we're entering a very dangerous situation in that case. That's a future I don't want to live in. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this exploration of the word hate, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more in the future. As I mentioned before, this word was submitted by a patron. If you'd like to become a patron, you can find my Patreon page by following the links below. You can also help support the channel or even request a word by using the PayPal link below as well. For links to my sources,